Hi everybody and I just want to go through some basics before we start the class. Uh, just remember to look at the syllabus and check the dates. If you have any questions about the dates please message me on the Kakao group chat or message me via my email address that's in the syllabus. and if you haven't already uh, please check which Google Classroom you need to be signed on to the passwords are there if you need any help with the Google Classroom please again send me a message using Kakao Talk or ask another student who's already signed on to Google Classroom if you go onto the website it should help you cite give you uh, instructions about how to sign up for the class. Another thing you need to make sure that you get done is to be on the IQ Online practice. This you can find at the front of your book, the first two pages. If you follow the instructions there and sign up for my class, you can see on this slide here the class codes that I've recommended for you to join. Please make sure you join the right class because uh, I'll need to check to see whether you've done the work that I've assigned you through this uh, website. This is the schedule for 003. Uh, there will be uh, this won't be the complete schedule. If you have any questions about that, you need to contact me. As you know, due to the coronavirus, uh, the schedules had to be changed slightly this semester. But if you just check through there, that will give you details about the midterms, the projects, and the finals. And if you have any more questions, as I said, contact me. This schedule is for my 023 class. Again, as I said previously to the other class, look at there for the midterms, the projects, the finals, and other relevant dates. If you have questions about holidays, contact me. And this one's for my 029 class. And Again, all the dates are there, midterms, finals, projects, and as I said, any questions, contact me. So this is also the schedule for class 026. Check the midterm dates, the final dates, the project dates, and other dates that are relevant to you, and let me know if you have any questions. If we haven't done the midterm already, if this class is before the midterm, please make sure you understand about the role plays for the midterms. Here's the slide for that, and there's lots of information there. Um, and I think it would be good for you to remember that everyone should be involved in role plays, whether it's for the midterm or not, that all students should participate thoroughly in that role play. So these are the uh, what you need to study for the midterm and the finals. If we haven't done the midterms yet, please check units 1, 2, 3, and 4. You can see the pages that are required on there. So unit 1, for example, has, a vocabulary, uh, has vocabulary questions from page 7 and grammar from page 20. The finals, if we've done the midterm already, don't forget the finals cover units 5, 6 and 7 and also the pages are there uh, if you have any questions about unit 7 because it's been blanked off there, let me know but you should find those on my PPTs that I send via the Kakao uh, open chat. This is a reminder about the project work it's got the link on there. Actually, I've sent you the same slide to the Kakao Talk chat room. And I think if you just go on to the project 
time uh, project table which is on my Google Drive and you can you can find more information about the projects there don't forget to work as a team to try to meet the deadlines which are on the deadline pages the schedule pages of the slides so good luck So this is the makeup class for Unit 7 and if you remember Unit 7 which is on page 152 is um, it's about anthropology and anthropology uh, is the study of societies I think um, has the unit question how can <coughs> accidental discoveries affect our lives and there's lots of discoveries that have happened in in the world and I don't know if you've ever seen this movie called The Imitation Game and this movie is about a real-life scientist or computer scientist and it's played by the actor who plays Sherlock Holmes in the BB in the BBC show Sherlock and he also plays Doctor Strange. Um, the character uh, is Alan Turing and the actor is Benedict Cumberbatch. So this is set in World War II and if you know anything about this story <coughs> it's based on the biography of Alan Turing and the Enigma and um, it's about the um, it's about Alan Turing's um, work with cryptography in World War II. So he worked at a place called Bletchley Park, which is in England, and he did a lot of secretive work. And he needed to dis needed to design a machine to decipher the Enigma messages which the Nazis were sending to one another and he was able to break the code and he created this huge uh, machine um, which helped cryptographers understand what the Nazis were doing it's a fantastic movie it's, it's got um, okay there's there's a sort of um, another part of the movie which is about his personal life and about LGBTQI plus so I mean if you're interested in that then it's also a good film to see I preferred it because of the the, uh, the war story and and I love engineering and but you know maybe you're more into uh, social sciences and looking at equality and things like that so on Im on the IMDB web page <coughs> the movie received 8 out of 10 so they gave it a B minus um, but it's really grown in popularity um, over the years this film so if you haven't seen it yet I really recommend it it's also got an actress called Kira Knightley she's from England too most of the actors and actresses in this film are British and uh, if you go to the bottom of the IMDB it gives you more statistics about the box office its budget it it cost 14 billion million dollars to make and it grossed 91 million in the USA so it's community communicable cumulative it's basically worldwide gross was 233 million dollars and on Rotten Tomatoes they gave it an A minus the critics it got 90 percent but the audiences loved it too they gave it 91 percent and there's more information there. there's more critics comments and viewer comments and quotations at the bottom Alan Turing says sometimes it is the people no one imagines anything of who do the things that no one can imagine and then another quote by him was I God no because God didn't win the war we did <laughs> so anyway <coughs> it's a good film to see so this is another movie about famous scientists 
and um, this movie is about Diane Fossey. She is a scientist or naturalist actually who uh, worked in Rwanda and and she worked with the mountain gorillas. This movie was nominated for five Academy Awards because basically the director Michael Apted is really famous. He's a really famous British director and he's he's made James Bond movies, he's made a lot of movies in, in uh, his life and still around and the f actress is Sigourney Weaver. She is very famous because she was in the movie Alien and she's also in the first Ghostbusters movie. She's a really beautiful actress, been around for many years and they called her the Queen of Sci-Fi but in this role it's not fiction it's based on real life and um, in this particular film she uh, is an occupational therapist and is inspired by an anthropologist called Lewis Leakey a paleoanthropologist to devote her life to the study of primates she writes to this man called Leakey and and she writes ceaselessly to him for a job cataloging and studying the rare mountain gorillas of Africa and so it's about her story to Africa really it sounds really it's a really exciting film I've seen it a long time ago if I go on to IMDB the critics there give it 7 out of 10 so it's got a C minus I, I personally think it's a lot better than that. There's a lot of photos on this website and you can see pictures of Sigourney Weaver with gorillas. It's set in war-torn Africa and there's a lot of emotion in this film and it's really just a fantastic movie. It's worth seeing. Anyway, just have a look at IMDb and search for Gorillas in the Mist and it gives you more in detail about that movie. And also on Rotten Tomatoes, the critics gave it a B minus, 83%, and 74% of the audiences liked it. And at the bottom there's critics and critics critics quotes and audience quotes. So I recommend having a look at that look at the video clips on YouTube if you want, the trailers and find um, you know find a way to watch the movie if you can. Gorillas in the Mist, the story of Diane Fossey. Here's another movie about a famous scientist. This is uh, a British scientist um, called Darwin Charles Darwin and this movie is a 2009 British biographical drama film about Charles Darwin's relationship with his wife Emma and his memory of their eldest daughter Annie as he struggles to write on the origin of species. So this is um, his relationship uh, with his family basically, his family life. I know that his wife was um, not a scientist I think and maybe there were some views that he had that she perhaps didn't understand or didn't appreciate and so the main actor is Paul Bettany he plays the Vision and Jarvis in Iron Man and his wife is played by Jennifer Connelly so actually Charles Darwin's wife was uh, his first cousin <laughs> so it was an incestual relationship quite strange but I think they got away with it back then even though it wasn't very good so if we look at the IMDB web page it got 6.7 it's a D plus and um, there's loads of 
photos there, more information about the actors. Benedict Cumberbatch is in this movie. And um, it's, it's about his life. What happens when a world-renowned scientist, crushed by the loss of his eldest daughter, so his daughter had died, formulates a theory in conflict with religious dogma? Because England was a very strong Christian country at the time. Not anymore, but it was at that time. And so his theories did go against particular uh, beliefs at the time. Uh, anyway, the Rotten Tomatoes website did not give this movie a good review. <coughs> Excuse me. It got 46% from the critics. That's a big fail. <clears throat> and the audience didn't like it either. They gave it 49%. So this movie was not very popular at all. It didn't do well. Honestly, I haven't seen it. But um, if you want to have a, if you want to watch this movie, you can. Some uh, websites, for example, Wired, said that this movie was controversial. Um, it didn't do well at all, and I guess uh, they said it was too controversial for backward America, a land whose last president thought that creationism and evolution stood on equal ground. So I guess because this movie is about evolution and Darwin himself didn't really know what he believed in the end of his life. He was very confused about his own beliefs. So anyway, in the Guardian newspaper they say Charles Darwin's inner turmoil is laid bare in a subtle and persuasive biopic. So there we go, it's all about his inner turmoil with life, the poor soul. So watch that if you want to. I don't think I will, but it might be interesting for you. So this episode is about accidental discoveries, like dynamite was discovered by accident. And what I want you to do is to think about and work together with your friends and think about the uh, scientists and their discoveries and there's so many scientists out there uh, in history books that you can read about I mean I can just uh, think of one Niles Bohr he's one very famous person I don't know if you know who he is Niles Bohr is a, f um, a famous scientist I think in modern history and Niles Bohr was a physicist from Denmark, of all places, and died in 1962. And he made lots of discoveries, you know. And so maybe you can uh, do a mind map of scientists and their discoveries. We talked about Darwin and his discovery of evolution. But in fact, actually, his grandfather was an evolutionist, I believe. So I don't think it's something that was new, and I think another a number of other scientists um, also uh, believed in evolution at that time. So I think, uh, but if we look at people like Bohr, Niles Bohr was the first to discover that electrons travel in separate orbits around the nucleus, and the number of electrons in the outer orbit determines the properties of an element. Ooh. So the properties are determined by the number of electrons according to Bohr. So what I want you to do is work by yourself or with a group and think about um, famous scientists and what they discovered. I mean there's that Schrodinger too. Schrodinger, Erwin Schrodinger died in 1961 was an Austrian physicist and he was he came up with a, a groundbreaking breaking wave equation for electron movements and won the Nobel Prize in 1933 okay so you can go through those and uh, I, Einstein would be there right and Isaac Newton Isaac Newton who discovered gravity I think that's the basics what about Archimedes 
Archimedes is also very famous and so you can think about all of those really famous scientists who discovered things and do a mind map about them there's many scientists around the world many uh, scientists in, from all sorts of countries including I think maybe even Korea but work with a friend if you want and make a list of names make a list of their discoveries okay so Rosalind Franklin discovered DNA she was a famous physical chemist and so there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people I can just read a list of them I can go through them now Cleveland Abbey Richard Will Willem Heinrich Abegg Sir Frederick Augustus Abel John Jacob Abel Niles Henrik Abel Peter Abelard Philip Horgy Abelson I don't know how to read his name there but there's hundreds and hundreds of people who are famous for discovering something in science this part of the class I want you to th think about the scientific discoveries that have happened through the years and then discuss which ones you think are the better ones you can compare two of them but you need to argue why you need to argue why as well so here's a list there are 18 different discoveries there and you need to think which ones are the most important discoveries which ones have helped us the most and which ones are the most useful okay so for example uh, let me choose two um, 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 the car and the microscope which one is the better scientific discovery if I say the car and the microscope I would think in my opinion car versus microscope in a battle I would say the microscope is the winner only because the pros from the microscope are so undeniable we can see many things under a microscope that we couldn't see with the naked eye we can see how disease works we can see all sorts of structures that are beyond our own imagination and but with cars okay there's some pluses and minuses there's a lot of minuses though isn't there car accidents they go too fast they can kill people they make pollution they're expensive their their gas they their gas is expensive um, okay they can get you from A to B quickly and I guess they are more comfortable than the bus in the subway but they're very very uncomfortable I would put microscope as number one because the microscope has helped doctors and many other people in this world okay then let's me choose two more okay uh, the television versus mm, electricity well I think obviously electricity wins because without electricity we couldn't have television uh, televisions don't work with just machinery they need electricity to make the screens appear uh, with the pictures on so clearly in this one the winner is electricity and okay there's a minuses there's pluses and minuses for both of them electricity can kill people but television can waste people's time and life so clearly clearly electricity is the winner there so choose two of those and try to um, compare them and discuss with a friend and decide which one is the best if they went head to head in an MMA fight for honor which one would win look at the pros and cons there here's a game that you can play either by yourself or with your friends the game is called the house is on fire and I think what do you do when the house is on fire 
Well, you try to get the fire extinguisher to put it out, but what if that doesn't work? What if the fire is too strong? Then you need to run away! And when you run away, you need to grab things on the way out of the house that you want to keep. Things dear to you. So here's the story. A fire has broken out where you live. You have a few minutes to grab five of your belongings and rescue them. Which five things would you take? Remember that you have to carry them all. One student will read out their list. The others will ask him questions such as why didn't you want to take that? I chose jump jump jump. Why didn't you want to take that? So ask them questions about why they took something. So interestingly it says in part one remember that you have to carry them all. So you can't just take your bed even though it's very comfortable and the sofa because they're both comfortable and the TV because you like to watch TV. You can only take things that are reasonably small really when you're running okay so TVs beds and sofas are too difficult to get out the door and down the stairs because if it's a fire the elevators won't be working okay so for me if that was me what would I take well I would grab all my bank books and my passport I wouldn't want to leave without my passport because I would need to leave the country so that would be my first thing I think the passport because if I have to leave Korea I need a passport the second most important thing is I would need to get or to take my mm, medication because I have a need for medication because I have asthma. So first is my passport, second is my medication, third is my wallet because it's got all my money in it, fourth is my phone and fifth is my iPad. I would take all of these and flee! Flee out of the building! I'm quite lucky because I live on the second floor so I don't have far to go but I know that some of you live in apartments that are very tall and have to, you have to run down all of those stairs and there will be a lot of people in those stairways running down. So good luck on your way out and so what five things would you choose? You might ask me, well I didn't choose any of those teacher, I chose my cat. Why didn't you want to take that? Well I would answer, I don't have a cat, I'm allergic. But you decide and discuss with your teams, okay? So let's turn to the book. Page 152 is the beginning. Um, and let's look at the discussion page here and um, you need to discuss these with other people but why don't you first of all write down your own ideas and your own thoughts and then perhaps share them with uh, one of your classmates one of your group uh, one of your team or with someone you know who's on the same class in the same class as you so question number one the journalist Franklin Adams once wrote, I find that a great part of the information I have was acquired by looking up something and finding something else on the way. What do you think he meant by this? <clears throat> looking up something means maybe reading it in a journal, reading it in an encyclopedia, or studying something on the internet, and while doing that, learning something new, something they didn't know before, okay? What does he mean? Question number two. Have you ever discovered something important by accident? If so, what was it? How did this discovery affect you? Well, I don't know. Maybe I did find something that worked effectively for me. I, I think I, I have an idea, but I don't know how to describe it. Um, so what about you? Did you discover anything by accident? What was it? Maybe you discovered something about your parents or your friends by accident or yourself or the world or your community or Korea. Maybe you discovered something about science. Question number three. Look at the photos. How, in, how might each of these discoveries be useful? Okay. 
So when I look at the first photo, it looks like a fossil from a dinosaur. And if I go to the other page on page 153, there is something inside the person. Is that a pacemaker to help their heart work properly? And the last one is a message in a bottle. So what about those things? How might these discoveries be useful? Do you think finding fossils is a useful thing? Why or why not? Do you think a pacemaker or even I think maybe an x-ray might be useful? Maybe x-rays are useful. Maybe a pacemaker is useful. So talk about those pictures either by uh, write down your own th th thoughts and feelings about that and share that with a classmate. Let's go to the next page 153. Here you'll need to go onto IQ Online and answer these questions from the video, okay? So part B and part C are from the video. Let's go to page 154. <clears throat> page 154 is about... Um, it's, let's read what it says. The products below were all discovered or invented by accident. Check the three products you think have had the greatest effect on the world. Compare your choices with a partner. Discuss reasons for your choices. So in my opinion, I think... Hmm, well, let's look at the first one. X-ray. Has that at all uh, been effective in the world? I think it's helped a lot of people. It's helped a lot of doctors. Right? It's helped them... Um, cure sick people, help people with broken bones. It's helped soldiers in war. It's helped a lot of people who have been sick and couldn't go to work. It's helped sports people too. Sports personalities. Let's go to the next one. Potato chips. Snacks. Very unhealthy, full of fatty food, real fatty food and not very good. I think it's made the world more obese, hasn't it? It's made people become more overweight and unhealthy. Oh, today I ate some french fries. This reminds me of french fries, how unhealthy they are. Oh, I kind of wish I didn't eat them now. I'll have to go to the gym and burn them off. The next one there, dynamite. Well, it, it was used by terrorists, by anarchists actually. And it was used in war to kill people the enemy but mostly it's used to do uh, exploration and for mining so it's quite it's got some positive things but it's also quite dangerous and many people have died because of dynamite so it's had an effect but is it has it always been a positive effect I don't think so let's go to penicillin Penicillin is a drug that was discovered by accident by a guy called Fleming and it was the mold from food that got rid of bacteria and so now it helps and heals people. I think it's a very good drug. I think it's helped a lot of sick people. I think this is one of the positive things. I think so x-rays even though it's radiation is only if, if it's done in small doses can be very harmless and penicillin will help people who are very sick the next picture is a microwave oven I don't have a microwave I don't like microwave ovens um, I think microwave ovens are just so-so and I do think that they don't cook the food very well and it is a lot of radiation and I hate restaurants that just microwave the food and the last one, plastics, well, they are useful if we recycle them, but often they end up in the sea and leave pollution. So plastics are pretty bad. I think the three best ones, in my opinion, are x-rays, dynamite, and penicillin. If you discover something by accident, part F, if you discover something by accident, how do you know if the discovery is important? Discuss with a partner. Um, I'm not sure, but um, I guess when Alexander Fleming realized he had 
found a uh, way to kill bacteria using mold, he must have realized this is going to make medicine a much more uh, easier, much safer to use, much better. Hospitals were going to be revolutionized by that. And uh, dynamite too must have been uh, when the person discovered that he must have realized wow what, the, what is the potential here to help mankind yes but uh, yeah I think that's I think there must have been thought processes oh what can I do with this this is the first time someone's discovered this what can I do with it so I'd love to discover something new wouldn't you so some of the discoveries that have been made that have influenced science today have been fossils and dinosaurs and you know people like Darwin were influenced by these fossils and discoveries and now I want you to think about a TV interview prepare a mock TV interview between an interviewer and three people or two people who try to help the environment in some way the interview needs to focus on the what on what happens and how they help the environment so there's a mistake there a typo I'm sorry about that what sorts of things do people do when they help the environment okay so <clears throat> this is um, you know uh, you need to choose one person to be the TV presenter and it could be anyone who's a famous TV TV presenter there are lots of famous TV presenters in Korea, like Yoo Jae Suk, uh, but in America, there's also lots of famous TV presenters. You could be Oprah Winfrey, Ellen DeGeneres, David Letterman, Jay Leno, John Stewart. Um, these days, there's Conan O'Brien and Jimmy Kimmel, and uh, there's lots of them even James Corden now is in America he might be someone quite good to uh, be to pretend to be and okay and then when you want to choose three people who try to help the environment uh, I guess you need to think about famous famous environmentalists you know and and there's famous environmental activists too um, there's that young girl who's really famous now she's always in the BBC I forget her name but there's all sorts of really famous environmentalists out there uh, and you know <clears throat> what do environmentalists do what are their jobs you know what do they try to stop they try to stop ocean pollution for example right there's a lot of pollution in the ocean there's a lot of uh, um, there's a lot of things that you know teenagers these days are quite unhappy about you know and they focus on the air the water and um, animals being killed you know and there's always demonstrations these days isn't there um, people demonstrating against the environmental issues that companies and governments don't deal with so think about what uh, things like plastics problems with plastics what about um, the famous um, scientist called David, David Attenborough do you know him <coughs> he's really famous and he tries to tackle environmental problems he's like a kind of lobbyist uh, Al Gore who is a very famous politician Greta Thunberg is that girl I was trying to remember she was an environmentalist from uh, which country from Sweden and all of these European countries have really beautiful environment and they hate the pollution that's happening around the world so choose um, try to make a role play try to make a role play about that and uh, yeah work in a team or you can write the role play yourself at home and then share it with your team and do it in the class
I really like doing role plays and I think we could I think uh, there's lots of discoveries we can make role plays about so cave paintings is one lots of things have been discovered in caves right it's, uh, but as a role play uh, you are a team of teachers who need to teach some students about scientific discovery pick a discovery and the scientists who discovered it why did you pick that how can you teach that so I think we can let's just take one example there's a very famous scientist called Archimedes do you know Archimedes anyway Archimedes was a scientist who uh, was given a challenge by the king he had to prove that the crown that the king had received from the goldsmith was pure gold and was not tainted with silver. This was difficult to prove and he was at a dilemma. He didn't know what to do. Then one day he got in the bathtub and Eureka! He suddenly realized that um, the weight of gold uh, was at a different mass or gold had a different mass than silver so the same weight or the same size of gold and the same size of silver would weigh differently they would have a different mass okay so he used that knowledge to prove that uh, by using water that this goldsmith had actually put silver inside the crown as well and because of that the man was killed so bad but eventually Archimedes was murdered by the Romans but that's another story yeah so you can talk about all sorts of scientific disco discoveries what about Pythagoras do you know Pythagoras I'm sure you do Pythagoras he discovered the way to find out the answer to triangles okay so he said a squared plus b squared will always equal c squared right a squared plus b squared